if you're someone who's naturally upbeat, naturally in tune with yourself, where you can easily find that place of stability and just feel good in your own skin, kind of feel positive emotions most of the time. And if you're also the kind of person where you like to see other people do well, you like to help them, and you like to support them where you can, then at the same time, you need to be careful with opportunists who try to use your good nature against you. And it's not just that they want to use your, your, good, your good nature against you, but a lot of people, people who face their own demons, let's say, and people who struggle to feel good in their own skin and, and struggle to self-regulate, in particular those people who don't want to feel vulnerable despite having all those, those traits, um, you know, the ones who put on this really strong facade, this mask of charm or confidence. People like yourself, people in a place of stability, people in a place of well-being, you naturally rub them up the wrong way. And what that means is, if you, if you want to just go out and about and be your full self, be your best self, and if you want to be your best self openly, as opposed to kind of, you know, being somewhat concealed, then you, need, you do need to be careful because a lot of people do get rubbed up the wrong way by you because in a way, you're shining a mirror back to them of what they're lacking, of the areas where they are in fault and they don't like to face those parts of them. So a lot of people naturally start seeing you as the enemy, even though you've done nothing to them. And a lot of times you might not even know who they are. You might not even have had any interactions with them. So positive people, supportive, nurturing people, people who are openly positive, unless you have the right boundaries, unless you have certain barriers to kind of blocking out toxic people, you're going to quickly find that you're attracting very questionable char characters into your life. And a lot of times those characters make a way into your life as if they're a friend, potentially even as someone vulnerable who needs your help. Or they might openly tell you how much they admire you. Or they might just be rather indifferent. But however they approach you, if it is one of these opportunists, one of these manipulators, um, however they approach you, they have an agenda in mind. And the agenda is to somehow take you down, to somehow knock you off your high horses so they can feel better about themselves. So that's why it's so important for you to acknowledge this whole dynamic. And, and when you just carry yourself, you have to do one of two things. One is, if you just want to be who you are, your full self, you can do it, but maybe do it with a kind of flat effect demeanor where people can't quite, quite read you very well. So a lot of people who have mastered the art of not being very easy to read, that can be one way of protecting yourself. But secondly, if you want to openly be that character that you are, but not be targeted by toxic people, then you do have to have strong boundaries in place and your red flag system, you know, your toxic person um, detector, your internal guided system, you have to be really clued, clued up to all that. And you have to acknowledge the ways that they make a way into your life. Because once these people make a way into your life, you know, it's, it's not like, they're the, the known enemy that comes into your life to try to take you down. No, a lot of times they come into your life as a friend. And once they've made some kind of connection with you, one thing that they all have in common is once they've made some kind of connection with you, they quickly try to make you feel good about something. They, they, they want to make you feel good about something you're doing. They want to make you feel good about some kind of accomplishment. They want to make you feel good about your plans, maybe your self-confidence, maybe just your visible attributes they can pick up on, whether physical, whether less tangible. So they want to make you feel good about yourself. And they want to make you feel good about yourself, but even more good than most people would. So if you have a lot of, let's say you have family, you get on with friends, acquaintances, and let's say you have a support group, the toxic people will try to play their card a little bit more strongly than a natural support person would. 
So whereas you might have somebody who's healthy in your life who supports you and you support them, a toxic person will take it up a notch. And they'll try to do something to give you a sense of euphoria. They'll try to do something to give you a sense of kind of like this tingling sensation where, oh, they've really uplifted me with these comments. And they do it steadily and subtly, and they kind of keep picking it up until they can see that you're taking their bait. And that all of a sudden, you're becoming reliant on what they have to offer. And a lot of times, the very things they're complimenting about you, the very things they're telling you that are good about you, that they, that they respect, admire, appreciate, they reach that point where they see that you now become somewhat reliant on their validation of those things. But then the toxic person, the manipulator, the narcissist, the sadist, whoever it is, whatever, whatever malignant character you're dealing with, they'll do something to, to, cut, to cut off the supply of any kind of good feeling that they, were, that they were offering you about that attribute of yourself, about that accomplishment of yourself, about those plans that you have. And they might directly or indirectly do something where all of a sudden it's almost like they no longer respect who you are, they no longer respect what you do, but they try to do it in such a way where it's not obvious that they're doing it. They might compliment somebody else who has the opposite attributes of you. And they might do it either in front of you physically or maybe through social media or maybe through some other subtle means. They're very clever. But the message they're getting across is, oh, this other person who has this other attribute, which almost it's almost mutually exclusive. Like that person can't have that attribute and be a good thing and you have yours and be a good thing at the same time. So everything they do and say, it's almost there's, there's an implied devaluation of you. And this implied devaluation, and sometimes it's an outright devaluation, it starts to pick up momentum again. So the first time they do it, it's almost like they see you, your interest is getting peaked. Like, what's going on here? You know, this person was making me feel so good about this and so good about this. And now they're doing and saying things that are all implying that those attributes are no longer appreciated. Those attributes are no longer admired. And then you start to question yourself. You start to question your value. You start to question your integrity. And that can start creating anxiety in you. That can start creating stress. That can start creating dissonance. And then this person can very, they, they can, they can continue their, their campaign, their indirect but targeted campaign at you that no one else would realize what they're doing except for you because you, you notice the buildup to that. And they'll keep directly and directly saying or doing things, all but implying that you're not worthy, that you should be ashamed. But they're basically causing you to feel great shame, great unworthiness, questioning yourself. And all of this just captures your attention full on. And it becomes this brain drain. And they can play it out for weeks, months, sometimes even years if you let them. And it's a very, very nasty kind of campaign. And if you haven't been through it before, then if you haven't been through it before, these things can almost destroy you. But when you, ha when you have been through it before and someone else comes into your life that shows inconsistent behaviors and you're kind of knowledgeable about it, then there's kind of one or, one or two ways it can play out. On the one hand, you can cut that person out from the beginning and just not take them seriously. Or on the other hand, you can kind of treat them like you treat everybody else. Kind of let them get a bit close. And they'll try to do what they're going to do. And then it's almost like you can see them trying to create dissonance in you. You can see them trying to shame you. But because you're expecting it, it's almost like they're playing out of the manual that you already had. So it doesn't really affect you in the same way. And you can't take them seriously. Obviously, if you... If you take them too seriously and, you know, you want this person to admire you, then even if you know what's going on, it's still going to affect you. But the bottom line is, once you know what's happening, you know what to expect, you know what manual they play out of, then it doesn't really have the same impact. So just be wary of that. You know, going back to the beginning, if you are somebody who's upbeat, um, you know, you apply yourself fully to the things you do, you try to help people support, you know, you're just good at connecting with people and you kind of share that positive nature. If you don't have the right boundaries and you're not aware of the kind of characters out there, they can really cause a lot of havoc in your life. But if you know, 
if you're mindful of all those things, then their ability to take you down is very much limited. Okay. So, hope you found that helpful. Um, just another note, if anyone has anything they want help with, any kind of coaching, any um, like a chat, then please do feel free to reach out to me on Instagram or an email address that I have in the bio because I am doing some sessions if people have anything that they would like help with. Thanks for watching.